to be in the house of the Lord this morning. How many claim to bless his name this morning? How many came in to worship him this morning? Oh, come on, let's worship the name of the Lord this morning. He is worthy to be praised this morning. Thank God this morning for his goodness. Thank God for his mercy this morning. He is the one that woke us up this morning and started us on our way this morning. You need to give God a hallelujah this morning in this place. Somebody didn't wake up this morning. Somebody laying in the hospital this morning. Somebody on the street this morning. But look at God this morning. Oh, what a wonderful God we serve this morning. We serve. We bless the Lord. I bless the Lord for each and every one of you. This is the last first Sunday in the year of 2021. My have time going fast. Where did it go? It is moving fast. Time, I don't know, I don't know how many of y'all feel that way, but I do. And it's a reason that God is moving time fast. Because he wished that less of us, less of us, be lost and spend eternity in hell. So he said, it says somewhere in the Bible that he would speed up time. And that he is doing right now. Amen. We thank God for this communion Sunday. Minister and I made 40, it was 46 years ago that my first roommate at Gramlin introduced me to two young ladies. And she was one of them. And I'll never forget the first date. I said, can I, can I come back tomorrow night? And she said, yes. <laughs> and I think for the next three years, I would see her every night after that. <laughs> and now it's been 44 years. 44 years. That's, that's wonderful. That's wonderful. I thank God for my wife. I love her. I love her so much. She, she's been so good. She's been such a good, good wife, a good friend, and a good woman to me, and a good mother to my children, and grandmother too. Amen. Lord, I'm trusting. Lord, I'm trusting. Lord, I'm trusting. Lord, I'm trusting. I'm trusting in you, Lord. Lord, I'm I'm trusting in you, Lord, when you see me through. The road may be rough, Lord. Lord, I'm trusting. The road may be rough, Lord. Lord, I'm trusting. I said the road may be rough, Lord. Lord, I'm trusting. But I'm trusting in you, Lord, to see me through. Oh, it's so sweet. Trust in you, Jesus. I'm trusting in you, Lord. I'm trusting in you. Oh, just to take you at your word. I'm trusting in you, Lord. I'm trusting in you. Oh, I said, Lord, I'm 
I'm trusting in you, Lord. I'm trusting in you. I'm trusting in you, Lord. I'm trusting in you. I say, trusting in you, Lord. I'm trusting in you. I'm trusting in you. I wish I had some, some soprano, some melt to sing. Lord, Lord, I'm trusting in you. I am trusting in you. Yeah, I'm trusting, Lord, I said, Lord, Lord, I'm trusting, Lord, let me tell you, and I will trust in the Lord, I will trust in the Lord, I'm going to trust in the Lord until I some pretty, pretty bad times today. And I know I'm not the oldest in the congregation. I've just been walking around this earth for 68 years. But I've never seen it this bad. You can't walk out your house. You can't go to church. You can't go to a parade. They're running you down. I mean, it's bad. But through all the trials and tribulations I've been through, through all the pain and struggling, I've, been, I've learned one thing, that there's only one name to call on. And for me and my family, I will trust in the Lord. I will trust in the Lord. I'm going to trust. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1, 2, 3, and 4 will be our text for this morning. Amen. Amen. Hebrews chapter 12, <coughs> verse 1. Wherefore? seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness. Let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily beset us. And let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author, the finisher of our faith, who for the joy was set before him, that was set before him, endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be weary and faint in your mind. 
ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Let the church say amen. amen. Let me talk to you for just a moment. Run the race that is set before you. Run the race that is set before you. It's your race. And your race is not my race. And my race is not your race. Amen? Yet and still we serve the same God. We are saved by the same Savior. And we follow the guidance of the same Holy Ghost. Amen? But the race that you have to run Sister King, it's not my race, but it's your race. Mm -hmm. Paul simply advised you and the Hebrew Christians that they ought to run the race and run it with patience. And how can I run a race when I don't know what my race is? You know, amen. How could you run a race if you don't know what the race is? That's why you need to get in the Word. That's why you need to study. That's the why you need to read. That's why you need to pray. So God can talk to you. Matter of fact, when I talk about the different races, your race might be easier than mine. Or mine may be easier than yours. Or either, I got to run faster than you in order to get to where I'm going. But no matter what, we're still going all to, to the same place. Paul is just simply telling us, run the race. Don't give up. The songwriter put it this way, down at the cross where my Savior died, down where for cleansing from sin I cry. There to my heart was the blood applied, glory to his name. He says something else, I'm so wonderfully saved from my sin. Jesus so sweetly abides within. There at the cross, where he took me, where he took me, glory to his name. Run the race. In the eighth century BC, I'm I'm a fan of the Olympic, but I can't I can't I don't watch all of it. I, I, I used to watch the boxing, but I like the running. I like the race. I like how the sisters and the, uh, 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 how they have actually took over the Olympic when it comes to track and field and tracks. Uh, and I like that the idea that they run. They, they run for a victory. And they run to win the race. But when they win the race, it's not just outrunning somebody else. It's what comes with the victory. Money prestige, uh, uh, or even power, when, and just by winning a race. And some of them spend four years, maybe eight years, practicing to go into to the Olympic. But the first Olympic was held <coughs> in, 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 the Greek, in the Greek city long time ago in the eighth century. Uh, it was called, they would gather at Mount Olympic where they would have all these athletic competition. The various competition would do this. This is why they would run. They would run to honor their Greek gods, small G-O-D-S, and their Greek goddess, amen? Mount, Mount Olympus was the acclaimed home of all of the Greek deities. Although there was an abundance of Greek gods, but there was one of them who was the father of all the deities, the Greek gods, and that was Zeus. And I know y'all saw that on TV. It was widely held that the winner of these athletic competition would bring honor to their gods and to their goddess, whom the winning contestants would worship. Each runner, each Olympic citizen of a Greek city state anxiously anticipated the homage of being bestowed upon them by so-called Zeus and other gods and goddesses. They were
were serious about their religion. They would run a race to honor their God and their goddess. They would try hard to win that race to honor their goddess and their God. With, with, with Mount Olympus as the context, Paul wrote the book of Hebrews. If not Paul, somebody else. But they keep giving it to Paul. Paul penned this thing. He, for for 2,000 years, scholars had been trying to determine who wrote that book. I like to say Paul wrote it. Amen? And I like to say that, but I can't prove that. Amen? Even though the authorship, whoever wrote the book, amen, is not inclusive. Help me somebody. It's not sure. But what the book does, it inspires us. It lifts our spirit. It empowers us, and it, 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 it encourages us to worship our capital G-O-D. Using, using the metaphor, Paul used the metaphor of athletes and the ancient Olympus. The, the Hebrew writers teaches us that we are not battling or competing in our isolation. We are not doing it by ourselves. Why we are not doing it by ourselves? Because there is a grandstand. Help me somebody. While you are running your race, when you become, get discouraged. This is what the whole point of the sermon is, that you don't get discouraged. When you start to get discouraged, you need to look in the grandstand. And in the grandstand, Paul, I mean, sorry, Hebrew writer, says this. There is a great cloud of witnesses. Amen? Someone that have already went before you. Uh, help me somebody. He even, he even said something about, he named one of the prophets. He said, he was a man just like you. He said, and he called that it wouldn't rain for three years, and, and, and it did not rain. Three years, three months, it did not rain. And when he asked God again for it to rain, it rained. People of God catch the point that if he could do it, you can do it. Somebody help me here? I mean, if he believed, if he prayed and believed and God answered his prayer, what about you? So when you get discouraged, help me, y'all. When you get discouraged with your children, help me, Lord. Look for Hannah. Help me, Lord, because she is a witness that's sitting in the grandstand. Can, can, I, can I help you? Let, 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 me get, let me get this way. Can I help you? When you are running the race, and you feel like quitting. Lord have mercy. Can't you hear the Apostle Paul standing up in the stand telling you to keep on keeping on? Somebody go help me here. Greater things that God got for you. <laughs> Baby, hang on in there. <laughs> because what you going through down here is not, it cannot be compared for what God has for you on the other side. Somebody help me here. In other words, he's telling you, keep on running. Mm. This means that, that we have testimonies and examples of heroes and sheroes. <laughs> Somebody help me here. Heroes and sheroes <laughs> of faith in God. <laughs> Ain't God all right? Somebody go help me here. <laughs> if I could bring Mary Magdalene in the picture. She would tell you, help me somebody, he cast seven demons out of me. Hallelujah, somebody. You ought to use your imagination, y'all. Can I get you back in the house? Seven demons on the inside? Ain't God all right? It's enough dealing with one demon, but when you got to deal with seven demons, somebody gonna help me here. She gonna say, he cast out seven demons. Ain't God all right? And he took out 
that heart of demons and put in a heart of gratefulness. Ain't God all right? Mary Magdalene said, I don't mind worshiping him. I don't mind giving him glory. I don't mind praising God because he been good to me. Come here, Mary. Ain't God all right? God chose me among all women. Ain't God all right? Somebody gonna help me here. He chose me to be the mother of his son, the savior of the world. Ain't God all right? Come here, Elizabeth. God chose me to be the mother of the forerunner of the savior of the world. World. Ain't God all right? Somebody gonna help me here. Come here. Ain't God all right? What about that captain? Help me, Holy Ghost. I heard the word. He showed me a vision. How many of us up in here that God has shown you a vision that came true? Help me, somebody. He said he showed me a vision to call a man and when the man came, he showed that man the same vision. God work in mysterious ways. His wonder is to be performed. Ain't God all right? And guess what? My whole house got saved. Hallelujah, somebody. How many of us, when we get saved, that don't, don't want our whole house saved? Ain't God all right? Even the black sheep in the family can get saved. Ain't God all right? Right. Somebody help me here. Come here, Peter. Ain't God all right? I was a rascal and a liar and a coward. Hallelujah. But when I got the Holy Ghost, I stood up and preached the word of God and thousands got saved. Ain't God all right? Come here, Joan. The hallelujah. The pride, Lord have mercy. The beloved disciple. Say, I followed him everywhere he went. I stuck by his side. I took care of his mother. Ain't God all right? Hallelujah, somebody. He made me a preacher. They cast me on an island for punishment, but I wrote the word. And while before I wrote the word, hallelujah, I saw the risen Savior. He appeared to me and told me to write the word. Ain't God all right? Run this race. Hallelujah, somebody. Don't get tired, y'all. Hallelujah. Be like Nathan. Ain't God all right? Ain't God all right? When you feel that the devil have come upon you, go dip yourself. Ain't God all right? In the Holy Ghost three times. Ain't God all right? Lord, have mercy. And God God will wash you. Come here, blind man. I was blind, but now I can see y'all. Ain't God all right? Come here, crippled man. That's some witness up in here. When I get discouraged, hallelujah, if you think it's noisy in the Superdome, God have mercy. If you think it's noise in the Superdome, when I get discouraged, ain't God all right? Those witnesses stand up, hallelujah, and they scream, keep on keeping on, keep running, keep holding on. The Lord will, somebody go help me here. The Lord will make a way out of no way. Ain't God all right? I need some witness up in here. I need three people who's going to tell me, Pastor, I was about to give up. I was about to throw in the towel. But I heard, I heard, ain't God all right? My dad, mama in the grandstand. My daddy is in the grandstand. My late pastor is in the grandstand saying, hold Keep on keeping on. Run this race. Ain't God all right? I say run this race. Somebody help me here. So I went to him just as I am. Ain't God all right?
right. Hallelujah, somebody. I went to the cross. Hallelujah, somebody. I thought the race was over, but it wasn't over. I left the cross feeling good, but the race wasn't over. I preached the word, but the race is not over. Pastor, but the race is not over. Laid hands on people, but the race is not over. Ain't God all right? The race is not over. Pray for people. Pray for people. And pray for people. But the race is not over. Ain't God all right? He died. Didn't he die? He was buried. Ain't God all right? It was early. Sunday morning. He got up with all powers. I say he got up with all power and said the race is not over. Keep on running. Oh, minister, can I shut it down? Hallelujah, somebody. Now unto him who is able to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that we can ask or even think according to his power. Shut it down, preacher. That working on the inside, shut it down, Johnny. Unto him be glory. I say unto him be glory. Unto him be glory. In the church by Jesus Christ through all ages with the world without end. Amen. 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 Yeah. Woo. 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 Yeah. Power. Power. Amen. Amen. Glory. Run the race that has been set before you. It's your race. And let me give you a blessing. I've seen the end of the race. And you won. Matter of fact, I see you at the end of the race, and you look better than you look than when you, before you came through the race. And I look behind you, and the devil is in the dust. Your troubles is in the dust. Your heartaches and your sickness is all in the dust. You are now more than conquerors. You are more than conquerors. So I encourage you to keep on running, to keep on keeping on this morning. Is, it, is there anybody here? You've been frustrated, you're tired, you're discouraged. Every time you make one step, the devil pull you back two steps. Every time you think you done made it, you find out you got still more to go. How many of y'all thought it was gonna be easy? And you found out when you got in this race, it ain't easy. The Greek word, A-G-O-N, agon, it means agony in English. It means you run this race in agony, in agony. But you also run it in faith, knowing that you're going to make it. So I stopped by to tell you today, you gonna make it. 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 I saw daughter. I saw you and your husband and your boy. You made it. I saw you 
Sister William, you made it! Saw you. Those of you who have our faith in order, we invite you to share with us as we commemorate the death, the burial, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ. We believe he died. We believe he was buried. But we believe that on Sunday morning, that's why we have church on Sunday morning. It is our Sabbath day because Jesus rose on Sunday morning. As Christians, this is what we believe. And as the Christians in the Lost Street Baptist Church, every first Sunday, we recognize the communion service. Uh, 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 we cannot forget that. We do it once a month, but Jesus says as often as you do it, you do so in my name. Amen. So we come now and then we make this next commitment, which is the church covenant which have been written by men who had been inspired by God in the Black Baptist Church to write this covenant and we make this oh, commitment. Sweet. Amen. What you're have it been led as we believe by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior, church. We do now in the presence of God is angels and this assembly most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ's church altogether. We engage therefore by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in freedom and love to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge, holiness, and comfort. To promote his prosperity and spirituality, sustain his worship, his ordinance, his discipline, and his doctrine, church. To contribute cheerfully and regularly to the support of the ministry, to strengthen the church, to relieve the poor, and to spread the gospel to all nations. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion to religiously educate our children to seek the salvation of our kindreds and acquaintance. To walk circumspectly in the world, to be just in our dealings, faithful in our engagements, and exemplary in our support. To avoid all tattling, backbiting, and excessive anger. To abstain from the sale of the use of intoxicating drink, etc., and to tell you to to further engage, to watch over one another in brotherly love. To remember each other in prayer, to aid one another in sickness, to be slow, to take offense, but always ready for reconciliation and mindful of the rules of our Savior and to secure it without delay. And now unto him who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus be power and glory forever. Amen. Amen. Now, as they were eating, Jesus took bread and he broke it and he blessed, blessed it. it. And he Good said, eat for this is my body. Shall we eat? And then he took the cup of the fruit of the vine. Amen. Amen. He said, drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, and I will not do this again with you until in my Father's kingdom. Shall we drink? And I know what Jesus said. This is what pastor says. Put your mask up, back on, and then go out into the Mount of Olives. Amen.
the songs of the 